What is up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we have two special requests. The first one is a hip flexor and quad mobility routine. That's what we're gonna be doing today. And the second one is, Gabo, can you please make shorter videos? So here we have a short mobility routine for your hip flexors and your quads that you can do either uh, at the end of your training when you're fully warm. You can also do it every single morning as a daily practice to open this region as well. And you can also incorporate it as a standalone routine, 15 to 20 minutes in the middle of your day. If you, again, you wanna open this portion right here, the hip flexors and the quads are very connected. And when we have tightness on the hip flexors, most likely than not, we have tightness on the quads. So in this routine, we're gonna be going through several exercises. One of my favorite exercises to open both the hip flexors and the quads, which are a very limiting factor for most people, especially if you have a desk job or if you just sit around for too long, our hip flexors tend to get very tight as well as weak. If you don't have tightness and you just wanna strengthen your hip flexors, you can check our previous routine, core compression, and I'm gonna link it up right here and down in the description. But if you feel tightness and you just wanna open up this region, this routine, done in a daily basis will really uh, do wonders for you. This routine is accessible to all levels, so if you are a complete beginner, feel free to jump in. I would just recommend to have a couple of blocks handy with you to modify some other positions. We're also gonna be needing a wall for the routine, so make sure you're close to a wall. And if you are an advanced practitioner or advanced in this area that you are mobile in this area this routine i'm going to give you advanced modifications so you can increase the intensity of the exercises and get a deeper range of motion which opening the hip flexors and the quads is going to benefit you to your handstand line is also going to help any back bending positions such as the scorpion the one that we have on our logo as well as reducing any tension that you may have on your lumbar spine opening the hip flexors will actually release the lumbar region so if you have any low back pain uh, or if you have tightness on that area, opening this area right here will also open the opposite area. And without further ado, I'll see you standing in your mat. All right, family, we're gonna begin standing on our mats. We're gonna begin doing a little warm up, just heels to the butt. Now, before we do the exercise, I want you guys to keep a posterior pelvic tilt. So we focus really on the hip flexors, keeping that posterior pelvic tilt and your abs contracted. Begin slow, right, left, right, left. And keep going with the movement, creating hip extension, sending the leg back. Engaging the glutes a little bit as well core is engaged, so we're not just jumping around here. Around 15 more seconds. Make sure to play around, you don't have to be so strict. You can turn around, you can turn forward. Then the heart rate up a little bit more. Five, four, three, two, one. Stand tall on your mat. Lift your chest, observe your body, any sort of difference. Feel the heat on your body. Bring the right leg, flex it. You can use a wall for assistance if you want. We're gonna do a typical standing quad stretch. So grab the uh, front part of your foot, bring the leg back, posterior to your pelvis a little bit more, and bring the leg as high back, back and up as you can without arching the lumbar spine, but really focusing on opening this area right here. You can grab with two hands as well. Press the foot into the hand and the hand into the foot to go a little bit deeper. Five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Switch legs. Bring the left heel to your butt. Point your toes. Grab it with your left hand and send the leg back, keeping that the abs contracted. And lifting through the chest. If you wanna add to this routine a little bit of back bending, most of the positions, since we're opening here, you have the option to do this. Work basically on your entire anterior chain or just focusing completely right here. 
five more seconds five four three two one release the leg down now face the front of your mat we're going to be getting down into a lunge position which is probably the best exercise to open the hip flexors we're going to do a couple modifications so we can really emphasize that we're going to begin in a 90 90 position so left knee right on top of the left ankle right knee right below the right hip square the hips as much as possible so both of the hip crests are facing forward first step is posterior anterior pelvis this motion right here so your glutes are engaged your lower abs as well and you're gonna drive forward more than down is forward 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 until you feel that you stretch if your knee passes your toes that's totally fine but what i don't want to see right now is this this will focus more on the hip on the left hip i want to really focus on the right hip i'm gonna go forward 10 slow pulses really controlling that movement and getting two seconds once we get to each rep so posterior tilt the pelvis go forward for one two three four you can dorsiflex or plantar flex five six seven eight lift your chest high nine 10, hold for 10, 9, posterior tilt a little bit more, try the hips forward a little bit more, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, try to stay there, no, I'm going to give you a couple modifications, the first one is to grab a block, you can put it on the highest setting if that's what you need right now, and you can twist to the right, we're going to add now the quadriceps, now we're opening the hip flexors, Want to add the quadriceps by flexing the knee and grabbing the right leg and getting it as close as possible. So this is one modification, the easiest one. The second one would be the same with the block, but we are twisting now to the opposite side. So in my left, in this case. Now I want you to keep the hips square. It's not like we're twisting from the hips. The hips are remaining square. We keep that posterior pelvic tilt and we twist from our thoracic spine. So if the rotation is not accessible to you, then go to the other side and the last modification the one that i'm gonna do is place the hand on the mat and grab the foot in this case i'm allowing you to go deeper you can also adjust the feet as much as you need in order to feel it right here and again hip square and twist from here grab the ankle you can be on your palms or on your fingers from here we're gonna do a pnf stretch i'm gonna press the foot into my hand for five seconds and the hand into my foot. So it's an isometric contraction. And then we're gonna relax the entire body, but we're gonna bring the heel as close to our butt as possible for 10 seconds. I'm gonna be doing that three times. So let's go. Hand into the foot, foot into the hand for five, four, three, two, one. And relax, bring the heel towards you as much as possible. And of course, breathe. Second round, hand into the foot, foot into the hand, five, four, three, two, one, relax, get it closer to you, lift the chest up, square the hips a little bit more, posture a little, little bit more, rotate from your spine. Last one, three, two, one, hand into the foot, foot into the hand, five, four, three, two, one, and bring it closer to you. Five more seconds, five, four, three, two, one, release the right leg, use your hands, simply transfer to the other side, we are not flowing today, just moving from one position to another one, so you take the time that you need to move to the other side, again, find that 90-90 position, dorsiflex or plantar flex, I'm going to begin going forward for 10 times, Possibly the tilt, go for one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, last one, and ten. Hold, lift the chest high, keep the hold. Five, four, 
three, two, one. Rotate either to the left, to the right, use blocks if needed. Send the hips a little bit down. Lift your chest, chest is always high. Take a deep inhale to lift your chest. Exhale to twist, bring the left heel towards your butt. Hand into the foot, foot into the hand is in three, two, one. Press, five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Relax your body, but use your hand to go deeper into the stretch. Second round in three, two, one. Hand into the foot, foot into the hand for five, four, three, two, one, and bring it closer to you. Last one in three, two, one. Press strong as hard as you possibly can, probably like 90% of your maximum effort. Two, one, relax, bring the heel as close as you can. Lift the chest, keep squaring the hips, rotate from the thoracic spine. And release the leg. We're gonna be doing, now moving on to the wall. It's gonna be the same lunges, but now with the assistance of the wall, we're gonna be able to get a little bit deeper, especially if you didn't feel it right there, or also if that was hard. Now here we're gonna target more the rectus femoris and the quadriceps, just because we have that knee flexion component. So first things first, the closer the knee is to the wall, the harder it's going to be. So I recommend to start even with the distance of your shin and then bring the foot to the wall. Now, as you are more advanced or as you feel the stretch, you're gonna bring the knee behind. We're beginning with the left knee uh, back, right foot goes forward. Find your stand again of a 90, 90 degree. Again, your knee can be here or can be here, depending on your current mobility today. Bring it as close to the wall as you feel the stretch and simply stand tall. From here, posterior to your pelvis, hold it there. For some people, this may be more than enough, even if your knee's a little bit forward. So simply hold it there, keep lifting your chest, keep posterior tilting, and even if your hips doesn't move, you are consciously driving the hip forward. You should feel it all the way from here all the way up to here. If this is you, stay here. We're gonna be staying, just staying as a passive stretch for about 60 seconds. If you wanna intensify the stretch, you're gonna grab the left hand, uh, internal rotate behind your body, and you're gonna grab the uh, right side of your left foot. Then the right hand, you're gonna internal rotate as well, and you're gonna grab the opposite side. I'm making an X with my hands. Lift your chest, and you are adding now a little bit of extra um, knee flexion. Now, if you're here, you can lean forward. Basically, you're not using the wall. So this is an advanced variation. Again, you can be here, you can be here, you can be here, or you can have the knee a little bit forward. 30 more seconds, whichever you are. Actually, let's do 40 seconds in, in case you were listening to me and not doing the exercise. And if you were doing the exercise, you can take a little break after you're done with your sets. If you're doing this variation, really open through the chest, keep that posterior pelvic tilt, drive the hip forward. And now, if you're working towards back bending and you wanna open the hip flexors at the same time they are opening your entire anterior chain, you're allowed to arch your back. But again, I'm still keeping a posterior pelvic tilt. In what I'm really focusing is opening my thoracic spine, which is the upper uh, back. From here, lean a little bit forward and open. Five, four, three, two, one, and release. Keep the knee and the foot where it is. Use your hands to bring the other foot and the knee right where you had the knee. If that was, that was comfortable, if, if it was too much, you can bring it a little bit more forward. Bring the left foot forward. Let's square everything up. So ankles below the knee, knee aligned with hips. Hips are square, posterior lateral pelvis. Drive the hips forward. Do not collapse into your lumbar spine, but keep a chest tall. If you wanna add any arching, you do it from here. You don't do it from here. So keep that posterior pelvic tilt, lean forward, find your progression, and hold 60 seconds on this position. If you wanna intensify this one, if you did on the other side, left hand internally rotate, right hand internally rotate, 
lift the chest, lift your chin, and get the heel closer to you. 30 more seconds. I'm just gonna show an advanced variation. You guys can stay there. In case you're doing this routine again and you wanna add some back bending, you can leave your arms, place it on the wall, and work on that <laughs> back bending motion. Again, keeping that posterior pelvic tilt and really focusing on the thoracic spine. I wanted to say that in case you're doing this daily and you see improvement, which you're gonna see opening right here. If you wanna get deeper, you work on getting the heel to your butt and then eventually grabbing the hand with your, your feet with your hands. Yes. Five, four, three, two, one, release. Get out of the pose as comfortable, gratefully as you possibly can. We're gonna be now laying down prone in our bellies. For things pose, I'm gonna put the forms in front of you. To find the distance, you can simply do this motion right here. The forearm distance apart between each form. You're gonna drag isometrically the shoulders back. Now here, I'm arching my lumbar spine, so I want you guys to keep a posterior pelvic tilt especially if you have low back tightness or any pain. Posterior tilt your pelvis to protect the lumbar spine. Retract the shoulder blades and lift through the chest. Only 10 seconds here to get accustomed to this position. Now, you're gonna pivot the right hand, 45 degree angles is basically my right hand is facing my left hand. From here, we're gonna twist Always try to keep that posterior of the tilt. When I bring the left heel to your butt, use the strength of your hamstrings first to really see how far you can go. Then support yourself with the right form, rotate to the outside, grab the inside of your foot and bring it closer to you. You can either be right here, right here, or if you're more advanced, you can flip your palm, so fingers are facing you and you can push your leg down. We're gonna be holding this for 30 seconds. Whether it's here, or here. Actively posteriorly till your pelvis, stay active in the pose. Some people call this a passive stretch, but I'm shaking, so <laughs> this is not so passive. So keep some integrity in the pose by posteriorly tilting the pelvis, pressing with your hand, and some small activation of the foot into the hand to activate the same muscle that we're stretching, so we don't become unstable there, but we're building strength in a mobility range. Relax, try to not throw your foot behind, but control it with your hamstring as much as you can. Release, return to things pose. Left forearm pivot 45 degree angle, right foot goes behind, right heel to the right butt, grab it on the inside, switch the palm if available, or stay whichever place you feel the stretch. Try to keep squaring the hips as much as you can as you twist from your thoracic spine. So a little contraction, foot into the hand, three, two, one, and then press it down. Those little movements and those little contractions really help you stay stable as you work on your mobility and flexibility. and release. Come back to Fink's pose and use uncurl your toes to come down into a kneeling position. We're gonna do a final resting and relaxation pose or flexibility pose. It's called hero's pose or recline hero's pose. We're gonna be on a kneeling position. Now for some people, this is more than enough to feel the quads. Now here we're taking the hip flexors out of the equation because we are not hip flexion position. But for some people, this amount of knee flexion, even if we are flexing on the hip, is enough for our quad. So if you just wanna finish here, maybe close your eyes, observe your body and just feel the stretch on your quad, you can stay here. I'm gonna offer some modifications if you wanna go deeper. First one, it will be open the knees slightly bit and open the feet slightly bit. As there, you're gonna sink your butt down. So now we're increasing that range of the knee of the yeah, knee flexion 
if you have any pain on your knee, back off completely this movement and stay right here. So, position number one, position number two, position number three will be leaning back as far as you possibly can go. You begin on your hands, maybe this is all you can go, or you drop to your elbows. Whichever position, whether it's kneeling, regular kneeling, wide kneeling, or recline zero pose, we're gonna be here for 30 to 60 seconds just to close off the practice and calm down the nervous system as a cool down pose. For some people it might not be that cool down, <laughs> but it should be more, it should be enjoyable, even when it kind of sucks. <laughs> if you are completely reclined, play around with, again, procedural tilting the pelvis and then sinking down to really open up the iliopsoas complex. Keep lifting the chest up. And just breathe. It's all here for about 30 more seconds. And as you probably noticed, uh, most of the um, positions that we did are back bending positions where we open the chest. And it's totally normal, like as we open this region, our body's going to tend <clears throat> to go into extension. But I want you guys to be aware that if you have tightness here, most likely you have tightness on the lumbar spine. So when you, if you are adding any back bending to any of the positions that we did, even the lunges, you can go into a back bend. If you are doing that, make sure that you are protecting the lumbar spine by really oscillating the pelvis and activating your anterior core and doesn't get pressure on your lumbar spine. And again, lifting from the thoracic. But if you don't want to add any back bending and just focus here, I'll give you, well, I already gave you all the modifications for that. Five more seconds, make it count. One deep collective breath, take a deep inhale. Exhale out through the mouth. And I slowly begin to come out of the pose. You see your forearms. Again, as a slow and as gratefully as you can. You can sit down in a meditative position, whether you're doing this at the end of your workout, it might help, or if you're doing it mid-afternoon and you want a quick meditation. And I always like to just sit down into stillness after my practices. But again, I wanted to keep this video as short as possible, so no relaxing meditation. Let me know guys down below if you enjoy these type of videos, these short videos, like quick little routines that you can add on to your regular practices. Or if you keep enjoying long videos, we're gonna be keep doing both probably, or anything that you guys ask. This routine is a short routine and within the SM Academy, we have short and long routines for the purpose that uh, we have our, our courses, our main courses, but if we're gonna add little things, which is the main vision of Saturno Movement, customizing, customizing the routines to your own needs, then you grab like couple add-ons and you add it to your course. This will be basically an hip flexor and quads uh, add-on that you can simply add to your workouts without major repercussions. So if you're interested in having a follow plan, but with the ability to customize with different add-ons depending on your own specific limitations and goals. All the information as always is down in the description. And with that being said, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, share, subscribe, comment down below what else you wanna see on this channel. And I will see you all next week. Much love. Hey. Hey. Boom. Hey boy, that's that's what happens when you open your hip flexors. <laughs> Subscribe.